What are the most unbelievable crimes being committed? Let's find out, starting with... Number 7. The Fast Food Fiasco Eugene Robertson was sentenced to 143 years in prison for a series of crimes committed in Aurora, Illinois. So what did he do to earn such a hefty sentence? He completely lost his mind one night and went on a rampage. Robertson's crime spree began late one night when he pulled into a Burger King drive-thru and attempted to pay for his meal with illegal substances. Yeah. When the employee refused, since illegal substances aren't considered currency, Robertson escalated the situation by pointing a firearm at the worker before leaving the scene. Then, things started to get out of hand. After the Burger King incident, Robertson then drove to a nearby 7-Eleven. Witnesses noted something unsettling about his behavior, describing him as talking about God and carrying a Bible. But clearly, his brain wasn't firing on all cylinders, as Robertson pulled out his firearm again, this time aiming it at a store clerk's head. He then popped off around a TV screen, displaying surveillance footage of him inside the store. As Robertson exited the building, a bystander retrieved their own firearm, and a brief exchange occurred though thankfully, no one was injured. But Robertson's night of chaos wasn't over. Minutes later, Robertson arrived at an apartment complex where he knocked on a woman's door. When she refused to let him in, he fired multiple rounds through the door and a nearby sliding glass window. Fortunately, again, no one was harmed, but the people inside were understandably terrified. By the time police arrived, Robertson had fled. Officers found him hiding in nearby bushes where he was eventually arrested. Robertson initially gave a false name, but his identity was revealed through his driver's license. At the time of his arrest, he was also in possession of an iPhone he had stolen earlier, along with several grams of Breaking Bad Blue. A jury convicted Robertson on multiple charges, leading to his 143-year sentence. This was far below the 400-year maximum he could have faced, but at that point, it's redundant, isn't it? Whether it's 143 years or 400 years, he's not getting out anytime soon. Prosecutors said they were satisfied with the outcome, explaining that the sentence reflected the seriousness of Robertson's actions and the danger he posed to the public. Despite no one being physically harmed during the incidents, Robertson's reckless behavior that night could have easily resulted in tragedy. So it's good that he'll be sleeping on an uncomfortable cot for a long time. Number six, the ironclad scam. Paul Matthews, 62, and his son Dean, 40, both from the UK, were thrown behind bars for a scheme that spanned three years and netted them roughly 136,000 pounds. The pair came up with a scheme involving the return of heavily discounted, reconditioned Teffel steam irons to Argo stores, which are similar to Target all while using forged receipts to claim refunds or gift cards. Teffel irons are expensive, durable, and technologically advanced, making them ideal targets because they were valuable enough to return for significant money, yet still available for cheap purchase in reconditioned form. Paul and Dean would buy the reconditioned steam irons, which normally cost about 400 pounds when new, and then return them under the guise that they were purchased at Argos. Over time, they made 528 fraudulent transactions across several Argo stores. The scam was uncovered in early 2024, when Argo staff got suspicious about Paul's weirdly constant returns. Further investigation by City of London Police uncovered CCTV footage linking their cars to the fraudulent activity at various stores. A search of their homes yielded several irons in an Argos carrier bag and digital devices connected to the crime. Despite being arrested and released on bail in February of 2024 under the condition that they avoid Argo stores, the father-son duo couldn't resist continuing their illegal activity. They were back at it less than 24 hours after their release, eventually leading to their second arrest in May of 2024. Finally, in August of 2024, the court sentenced Paul Matthews to three years and Dean Matthews to two years in prison for conspiracy to commit fraud and money laundering. We've never heard of Teffel irons, and seriously, who spends that much on an iron, of all things anyway? It's clever, if not a bit weird, 
that the two men even thought of running an iron scam and that it was actually somewhat successful. Number five, hearts in the wallets. Rosanna, Lisa Stanley, and Gina Guy were accused of conning at least 16 elderly men out of more than $7 million through an elaborate romance scam. Prosecutors allege that the two women used fake stories about needing kidney and liver transplants and other fabricated business ventures to convince their victims to hand over large sums of money. The scheme ran for over a decade, from 2009 until their arrest earlier this year. The two allegedly targeted their victims through various means, including in-person meetings, phone calls, text messages, and online dating platforms. One victim who really believed Stanley was a fortune teller handed over more than $1 million after she convinced him that his money was tainted and needed to be cleansed. He sent her the money over the span of several years, from 2009 to 2020, under the promise that she could help him achieve his desired lifestyle. Another victim met Stanley in early 2023 and believed they were in a romantic relationship. He ended up paying for her rent, living expenses, and even handed over his online banking information, which Stanley then used to make unauthorized purchases. Prosecutors said she also convinced him to invest in a fake catering business in Florida, costing him at least $555,000. Stanley used $220,000 of the stolen money to pay off loans on luxury items, including a boat and a high-end car. Meanwhile, Guy allegedly scammed at least four other men out of over $900,000 by fabricating stories about needing money for kidney transplants. Both women were arrested, with Stanley caught in Miami Beach and Guy in New York. They are facing charges of money laundering, wire fraud, and conspiracy, and both were released on $250,000 bonds and are awaiting their trial as of the release of this video. Number four, the home theft heist. Marcus Wilker, a 48-year-old from Long Island, was handed three to nine years in prison for running a massive real estate fraud scheme targeting elderly and disabled homeowners. Wilker and his crew, operating out of Queens, managed to steal three homes in Jamaica and St. Albans, profiting over $1 million through fraudulent sales. Really, how does someone steal one house, let alone three? Apparently, Wilker preyed on vulnerable individuals by identifying homes that appeared neglected or had absentee owners. Once identified, the crew would use forged documents to transfer ownership of the properties without the actual owner's knowledge. These homes were then sold at steep discounts to unsuspecting investors. Wilker also didn't work alone. His accomplice, Stacy Saunders, a former mortgage broker, would market the homes to investors, facilitating quick sales. Disbarred attorney and Yakachi Hercules played a crucial role by creating the necessary legal documents to complete the fraud. Additionally, Dean Lloyd and Jerry Curran, both in their 60s, impersonated the real owners during the contract signings and closings. The operation used a pretty complex system where Wilker used personal information from the actual homeowners to create fake IDs, social security cards, and other documentation. The amount gained from these illegal sales was then laundered through out-of-state banks. After pleading guilty to larceny, Wilker received his sentence, while Hercules, who also admitted involvement, is facing up to three years in prison. Number three, the indecent intruder. Super weird guy Paul Cayenne broke into a luxury mansion in Bel Air using a garage remote he found in an unlocked car parked in the driveway. The house belonged to this guy named Matt Sabs, who was immediately alerted to the intruder through a security system notification. When Sabs saw Cayenne on his home surveillance camera, he confronted him, only to be met with an unsettling response. Cayenne claimed the house was his and even threatened to call the police on Sabs. Cayenne was also not wearing any clothes at the time, because why wouldn't he be? Despite being caught inside, Cayenne had remained fairly calm and continued to explore the mansion. He casually dressed in Sabs' clothes and even took a dip in the pool. Cayenne made himself at home, lounging on the couch and inspecting the items around the house. 
However, the situation suddenly went sideways when he turned his attention to the family's two pet parakeets. Caught on camera, Cayenne sadly injured both birds. Sabs, scared by what he saw, now decided it was too dangerous to stay. He escaped by jumping off the balcony and onto his car, calling 911 as he fled. Local security quickly arrived at the scene, followed by the Beverly Hills police, who arrested and charged Cayenne. Sabs later expressed relief that his family wasn't home during the incident, acknowledging the situation could have been much worse. Just a bit of our own advice here, but if you ever see some weird guy breaking into your house and wearing your clothes, don't confront them. Just call the police, because this guy was obviously a nut bar and things could have clearly gone very bad. Not to blame the victim here, but we wouldn't have taken that long to call security. Number two, misdirected payments. Lily, a retired bookkeeper from Sydney, became the victim of a sophisticated scam that stole $26,000. After selling her apartment, she had been expecting to receive the deposit from the sale. Unfortunately, Lily never saw a dime of that money. Lily, whose real name has been protected, suffers from a degenerative eye condition and is legally blind, so she relies heavily on support services for daily living. The lost funds were essential for her as they would help her maintain her financial independence. Unfortunately, the agent handling her sale didn't verify the transfer details, including an email address that ultimately allowed a scammer to intercept and redirect the money to their own account. The scam occurred through a payment redirection scheme where hackers impersonated Lily by sending fraudulent emails with altered bank account details. The real estate agency, HT Wills, followed what they believed to be Lily's instructions and transferred the funds to the scammer. Lily only discovered the issue when comparing email chains with her agent and found the discrepancies. Despite the clear oversight, HT Wills has refused to accept responsibility, saying that they weren't at fault. The agency initially expressed sympathy, but has since stopped responding to Lily's attempts to recover her money. As someone with vision impairment, Lily felt that the agent should have been a bit more cautious in verifying the details, possibly by a simple phone call. Cybercrime experts warn that email communication alone is insufficient when dealing with large sums of money. They emphasize the importance of verifying sensitive details through direct communication, especially in high-risk industries such as real estate, which makes total sense. What do you think, though? HT Wills was obviously hacked and fooled into thinking that the email they already had was correct. So does that make them accountable? Tell us what you think in the comments below. Number one, touchdown to meltdown. Former NFL player Gozder Sherilis was arrested for his weirdly disruptive behavior during a flight that had to be rerouted. Sherilis, 40, who played as an offensive tackle in the NFL, was on board a Delta flight heading to Dublin when his actions forced the plane to return to Boston. Reports say that Sherilis urinated on another passenger who turned out to be an elderly woman in her 70s, which apparently upset the flight crew and passengers. Funny how that happens. Before the plane was forced to land, things had already escalated. After urinating on the elderly woman, Sherilis allegedly confronted another passenger, a 68-year-old man, over seating arrangements. Witnesses said Sherilis struck the man during the argument before taking his seat and passing out. The situation created chaos in the cabin, leaving passengers in shock and fear for their safety since Sherilis is obviously a large man. It was clear at that point that the flight crew had no choice but to turn the plane around. Once the plane landed back at Logan Airport, Massachusetts State Police boarded the aircraft and attempted to remove Sherilis. However, he refused to cooperate and had to be escorted off the plane by officers. Sherilis was then arrested on charges of disorderly conduct and disturbing a flight crew. He later explained his behavior by attributing it to the use of sleeping medication that he didn't normally take. In a statement following the incident, he mentioned that he had taken this medication in preparation for the overnight flight, and it led to behavior that he said wasn't representative of his character. 
Witnesses also said he had appeared intoxicated before the flight, which pretty obviously contributed to the whole debacle. Sherilis had a long career in the NFL, playing for the Detroit Lions, Indianapolis Colts, and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Since retiring in 2016, Sherilis has pursued a career in real estate, founding his own company, Bastion Companies. Despite his success on the field and in business, this recent incident marks a significant public misstep. Delta Airlines, which had to reschedule all other passengers due to the disruption, issued a statement emphasizing its zero-tolerance policy for unlawful behavior. While most passengers were rebooked on a new flight, the incident still irritated everyone involved. As of the release of this video, he's scheduled to appear in court. Sherilis may have been a decent football player, but on an airplane, it sounds like he's a real whiz. Zing! Seriously though, always be very careful when taking any medication and adding alcohol. Nothing good ever comes of it. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section what you'd rather ride in. A self-driving car that's right 99.8% of the time, or an Uber driven by a human being.